Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a fringe top. It's been quite some time since I've worked with fringe, but whenever I do, I love the movement it gives in the piece. In this case, it's giving this top just the right amount of whoosh without being too distracting, so you might get away with this one in a more relaxed formal setting. Speaking of, whether you need a pattern for something formal, casual, or whimsical, you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet designs and patterns you won't find anywhere else, including new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 150 grams of yarn, and that's 300 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us a song that you think is perfect in every way. The most perfect song to me is September by Earth, Wind & Fire. Details for the giveaway down below, using three stitches for this project, and will be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, and half double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and I'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain that starts about 1 inch underneath our underarm down to where our belly button is, so our waist. I need a total of 9 inches or 22 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 35. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first half double crochet row. So we're all going to start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And now we're going to start our row one off with a decrease of two half double crochets. So we're all going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. So bring our hook down into that chain, pull through. For three loops on our hook. We are then going to insert our hook into that following chain, insert, yarn over, pull through, for four loops on our hook, and now from here we're going to yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. That is our decrease of two half double crochets, and this is now going to be the bottom of our piece. Right now we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain. So let's do the next half double crochet together. So yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, Insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and once more, yarn over, into that next chain, pull through, pull through all three, and continue with one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. We have put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. Now, into that last stitch, we're going to be doing an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over, into that last chain, insert with one half double, and then into that same last chain with a second half double. Now our row one is complete. For the body of this piece, we're going to be alternating between a back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row. So getting started on our back loop slip stitch row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now to do a back loop slip stitch, we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, then gently yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Again, into that next stitch, find that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. And just remember not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be too tight to work into. We are now at the end of our back loop slip stitch row, or our second row. 
Now from here, we're going to get started with our following half double crochet row. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Now into the beginning of every other back loop half double crochet row, we're going to start with a decrease. So since we just did a decrease into our previous back loop half double crochet row, into our following row, we are not going to start with a decrease. So we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. But since we are decreasing into every other half double crochet row, I do like to insert my stitch marker into the edge of my decrease rows, just so I know where I'm at so I can easily keep track. But getting started on our row three, we're all going to yarn over, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three with a regular back loop half double. Let's do that again. Again, yarn over, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, pull through, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. We've put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and we should have left the last one. And now to end our row three, we're all going to do an increase of two back loop half doubles into that last stitch. So yarn over, find the last stitch, insert into that back loop, and insert with one back loop half double, and then into that same back loop with a second half double crochet. And now from here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop half double crochet row that always ends on an increase of two back loop half doubles, but we are gonna start every other half double crochet row with a decrease of two. So just get started on our following row. We're going to chain one and flip our work. Each of our even number rows is going to be a slip stitch row. So from here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And I'll meet you back at the end of the row. So we have just finished up our back loop slip stitch row. So we should all have a total of one, two, three, four rows finished. Now we're going to continue on with this until we get an underarm portion that reaches from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm, making sure that we are stretching it as if we're wearing it. Now this is actually the width that I need. This is just about an inch and a half or four centimeters unstretched. Right before we move on to the next step, I'm actually going to do the decrease with you once more just to make sure that everyone got it. So I'm going to pretend as if I'm not done with this first underarm portion. And since I'm at the bottom of my piece, I'm going to chain two and flip my work. So like I said in one of our previous clips, we're going to be starting our back loop half double crochet row with a decrease into every other half double crochet row. So as you guys can see, we started our row one with a decrease. Our following half double crochet row did not start with a decrease. So the half double crochet row that we're about to do is gonna start with a decrease. So let's do that really quickly. We are all going to yarn over, find the last stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop, pull through, find that next stitch and insert into that back loop, pull through. Then we're gonna yarn over, Pull through all four of those loops. Now for those of you that need to keep going with your underarm, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and end the row off with an increase of two back loop half double crochet rows. And our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. Now like I said, we're going to continue to repeat those two rows until we have a portion that reaches from mid underarm to the corner of our underarm. And I will meet you back right after a back loop slip stitch row. So that means along the bottom. So like I said, I'm actually all finished up with the first half of my underarm portion right after my first four rows. Now we're going to continue on with our underarm portion, but we're going to be doing a couple more increases just to get a really smooth curve that leads up to our shoulder. So since we're all along the bottom, let's chain two and flip our work. Now starting with our following half double crochet row, it's going to be completely up to you. So you may have to start with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, or you may not. If you need to, go ahead and do your decrease. If not, then don't. Just make sure that you're keeping up with a decrease of two half double crochets into every other half double crochet row. So as you guys can tell, I do need to start my row off with a decrease. So just as a refresher, I'm going to yarn over, insert into that back loop, pull through, next back loop, pull through, pull through all four. And just like our previous section, we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. So we've made our way up with our back loop half double crochets into that last stitch. We're now going to be doing an increase of 
three back loop half double crochets. So yarn over. Insert your hook into that last back loop with one half double, into that same back loop with your second, and then same back loop with your third half double crochet. And now for this portion, we do need to increase into our back loop slip stitch row as well. So right after this half double crochet row, we're gonna chain two and flip our work. Now that first chain counts as a stitch, that second chain counts as our chain. We're gonna be inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook into that back loop with a slip stitch. So yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that always ends on an increase of three back loop half double crochets and a back loop slip stitch row that starts with an increase as well. And keeping in mind that we are still going to be decreasing into the beginning of every other back loop half double crochet row. Now we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can now stretch from mid underarm over to the front of our body. And I'll meet you back right after a back loop half double crochet row or along the top. I am back with the second half of my underarm portion finished. I have a total of seven rows. My width is now two inches or five centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna get started on the shoulder. So since we are right after our back loop half double crochet row, we're now going to make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. I need roughly four and a half inches or 11 centimeters. So I made a chain 20. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our following row which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row since our last row was a half double. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, we're gonna insert a hook into that chain. We're gonna yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that next chain, insert, pull through everything and put one slip stitch into every chain. So we put one slip stitch into every chain. Now we're gonna continue on with our back loop slip stitches into every stitch. So we are going to twist our work if we need to and just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, since this is the shoulder, we aren't gonna be doing any extra increases or decreases. So at the end of this row, we're gonna chain two, flip our work and do a back loop half double crochet row Remembering that if you do need to start your row off with a decrease, do so. Now, since this design does have a wider collar, what we're going to do is just do three of these shoulder rows. So this slip stitch row, a half double crochet row, and then another slip stitch row to make sure that we all end along the bottom. I'll meet you back when we have these three shoulder rows finished so we can get started on the neckline. So I am back and I have just finished up my three shoulder rows. Now we should all have three. And I now have a total of 10 rows and my width is just about two and a half inches or six centimeters now. Now we can get started on our neckline. So first things first, we're going to need to insert our stitch marker where we want our neckline to start. So I just inserted my stitch marker into a stitch that's nearest the base of my neck. And that is the 12th stitch from the top or just about two and a half inches or six centimeters from the top. Now from here, we're gonna get started on our neckline. So since we should all be along the bottom, we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. Now keeping in mind that we are going to start our half double crochet row with a decrease if we need to. I'll meet you back at our stitch marker. All right, so we've made our way all the way up with our back loop half double crochets. Now we're still gonna be alternating between a back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row. And for this portion, we are not gonna be doing any additional increases or decreases. We're just going to work straight across our chest. So just as a refresher, if we need to start our half double crochet row off with a decrease, make sure that you're doing that because we do want to have a really nice curve up to the middle of our chest. But other than that, just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And then for our back loop slip stitch row, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now we're gonna continue on with those two rows until we have a portion that can now stretch to mid chest. And I'll meet you back right after a half double crochet row. I'm back and the first half of my neckline is finished. I have a total of 21 rows and my width is just about four and a half inches or 11 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to do a middle row and that's just going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So from where we're at, we're all going to chain one, 
and flip our work. And all we're going to do is put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So we have just finished up our middle row, which was a back loop slip stitch row. Once we're finished up with our middle row, go ahead and insert our stitch marker into any one of the stitches. We just want to make sure that we know where the middle row is. Now from here, we're going to mirror everything that we just did here on the other side. So let's take a look at the bottom really quick. So as you all can see, I've been inserting my stitch marker into every other half double crochet row. And those are the half double crochet rows that I started with the decrease of two. And now that we're going down the other side, we're now going to be doing an increase of two into the beginning of every half double crochet row until we have the same amount of rows as this side over here. Now our following half double crochet row may be a little different for everyone. Take a look at your previous half double crochet row. If you did not do a decrease into the beginning of that row, this following half double crochet row is not going to start with an increase. But if you're like me and you did start your previous half double crochet row with a decrease, you are going to start our following half double crochet row with an increase. So from here, let's all chain two and flip our work. Now, like I said, I am going to start this following half double crochet row with an increase because my last half double crochet row started with a decrease and we want everything to be mirrored. So all we're going to do is yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into the last stitch from our previous row into that back loop with one and then into that same back loop with two half double crochets. And I'm going to insert a stitch marker into the edge of this row because this is my increase row along the bottom. And from here, I'm going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now we are working on the second half of our neckline. So all we're going to do is continue to repeat our back loop half double crochet row, making sure that we are now increasing into the beginning of every other back loop half double crochet row with a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our neckline, making sure that we are not counting that middle row. So just to count mine out together, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows. So from here on, I will be doing an additional eleven rows and then I'll meet you back to get started on our shoulder. So I am back and I have just finished up the entirety of my neckline. I now have a total of seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And now we're going to do our shoulder portion. So from where we're at, we're going to start by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. For those of you that have my numbers, I skipped a total of 12 stitches. So along this end, I made a chain 12. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain, do a chain one and into that chain that we blocked off, insert with a slip stitch and put one slip stitch into every chain. Then once we reach the body, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then we're going to be doing a back loop half double crochet row. So from here, all we're going to do is three shoulder rows because we did three shoulder rows on the other side. So it's going to be this slip stitch row. Our following half double crochet row, remembering that if we need to start it with an increase, we start that with an increase and then another slip stitch row. I'll meet you back when we have these three shoulder rows finished up so we can get started on the underarm. So I am back and my second shoulder portion is all finished. I now have 36 rows. My width is now eight inches or 20 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on the underarm portion. So first things first, we're going to need to insert a stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to the top of our shoulder. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 20. So getting started on my underarm, I inserted my stitch marker into the 20th stitch from the top. Now our following row should be a back loop half double crochet row. So we're all going to chain two, flip our work, and then get started on our half double crochet row, remembering to increase if we need to increase into this half double crochet row. And we're going to make our way all the way up, leaving the last three stitches right before our stitch marker. So we've made our way all the way up, with our back loop half double crochet row. We all should have left one, two, three stitches left right before a stitch marker. And now we're going to close off this row with a decrease of three back loop half double crochets because we ended off our row on the other side for our underarm with an increase of three. So we're all going to yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last stitch, pull through into that second to last stitch pull through and into that last stitch, pull through 
Then when we have one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all five. Now we're going to get started on our falling slip stitch row. So we're going to chain one and flip our work. So getting started on our back loop slip stitch row for this first half of our underarm that we're doing, we're going to start it with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches because remember for the slip stitch rows on the other side of our underarm, we did an increase. So insert your hook into that last stitch, pull through into that following stitches back loop. When we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. And from here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and that is it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on a decrease of three single crochets, making sure that we are still increasing into the beginning into every other half double crochet row. And then a slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as the second underarm portion that we did together. And we should all end right after a back loop half double crochet row and I'll meet you back. I am back and the first half of my underarm is all finished. I now have a total of 39 rows. My width is nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to finish off our front panel with the rest of our underarm. So from here, we're going to do the underarm portion that we started this piece off with. So our back loop slips and rows do not have any increases or decreases. And then our back loop half double crochet rows end with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, making sure that we are starting every other half double crochet row with an increase. So from here, since we all should have ended right after a half double crochet row, I'm going to put one slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, I'm going to chain two, flip my work, start off my following row with an increase of two back loop half double crochets if I need to, and then make my way all the way back up, putting one back loop half double into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches so we can do a decrease of two together. So I am back. I have just finished up my back loop slip stitch row and have made my way up with my back loop half double crochet row, leaving the last two stitches. Now we're going to do a decrease of two together. So let's all yarn over. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that following stitches back loop, pull through, pull through all four, and that's it. From here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our underarm portion finished. And just as a reminder, that's a back loop slip stitch row, one into every stitch, and a back loop half double crochet row that ends on a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, making sure to do an increase of two at the beginning of every other half double crochet row. When we have this underarm portion finished up, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. All right, so the second half of my underarm portion is all finished. I have a total of 43 rows. My width is 10 inches or 25 centimeters unstretched and I am all done. So I did do a chain up of one and cut. Now from here, we're going to be doing the back panel, which is done exactly the same way, but without all of the increases and decreases along the bottom. So let me just talk you guys through that. So I already have my back panel all finished up. So what we're going to do for our back panel is to start off by making the same amount of chains that we made when we started our underarm for the front panel. From there, we're going to be doing the same increases for the same amount of rows, which is an increase of two at the end of every half double crochet row. And then the second half of our underarm portion, which is an increase of three back loop half double crochets at the end of our half double crochet row and starting our slip stitch row with an increase as well. From there, we're going to make the same chain that we made that led all the way up to our shoulders for the same amount of rows, so it should be three rows for everyone. We're going to do our neckline and then repeat everything on the other side. So same shoulder and same underarm for the other side. Now all the increases along the top are going to be the same, like I said. And since the bottom, we aren't gonna do any increases or decreases, I'm just going to do a small sample size of the first few rows with you just to make sure that we have the handle of it. So this is my small sample chain to get started on the back panel. Once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. And from here, we're gonna yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. Pull through, pull through all three and put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So into that last chain, we're going to 
do an increase of two half double crochets. So there's my first, there's my second half double crochet into that same last chain. Now from here, we're going to chain one, flip our work and pull one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that is it. Now just remember along the bottom, we are not gonna do any increases or decreases, but everything else along the top will be exactly the same. I'll meet you back when we have the entirety of our back panel all finished up, and then we can seam everything together. So the entirety of our back panel is all finished up, and now we're ready to seam our sides. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning the ribbing that we have for the front panel is faced up, and the ribbing that we have for the back panel is faced down. Then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So what we're gonna do is find that next available stitch into the front panel and insert in through that front loop. Then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, and pull through everything. And we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. So now that both of our sides are all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is seam our shoulders. So our shoulders are gonna be seamed using a single crochet seam. So we're going to flip our work wrong side out, meaning the ribbing that we have is now faced along the inside. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to insert a yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row and two single crochets into every side half double. So let's all start by finding our first side slip stitch row, and this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert into the front panel, find the same top loop within the back panel, and insert in through there, and we're now going to single crochet. Now everyone's following side row should be a side half double crochet row, so let's find that top loop, insert your hook, find the following top loop within the back panel, insert your hook, single crochet once, and then another single crochet into that same top loop, and it should be a little bit easier since they should already be gathered. So into that top loop, into the side half double crochet row, into the front, and also into the back panel, and single crochet. Now we should all have just one side slip stitch row left, so just find that top loop within that row, and then find the top loop within the following row within the back panel, and single crochet, and do a chain up of one and cut. And from here, we're going to repeat what we just did here on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed up, let's get started on the collar. So we're going to need to flip our work right side out now, meaning all of our ribbing that we have is along the outside, and we're gonna insert our hook into any one of the side rows along the back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to do a single crochet row and we're gonna be putting two single crochet into every side half double and one single crochet into every side slip stitch row making our way all the way around. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop and it is a side half double crochet row for me. So I'm gonna insert with one single crochet. And since it's a half double crochet, into that same top loop, I'm gonna insert with a second single crochet. Let's do that again. This is my following side row, which is a side slip stitch row. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. And that's it, let's do the set again. Into our following side half double crochet row, insert with two single crochets, there's one, there's two, and then into our following side slip stitch row, find that top loop and insert with one single crochet, and that is it. We're going to be putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, two single crochet into every side half double crochet row, and then one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way around. When we do make our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space. 
So we have just finished up our single crochet row along our collar. We have slip stitched into that chain space. And now we're going to make a chain the length of the collar that we'd like. So I'd like for mine to be roughly three inches or eight centimeters. So now I'm gonna start by making a chain 15. So now that we have our chain, we're going to do our slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So bring our hook down. Into that chain that we blocked off, yarn over and gently pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, insert your hook in through there, yarn over and pull through everything. And that's it. From here, we're gonna continue to put one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into. So now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now gonna connect it into the base. So into that next available stitch into the base, we're all going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull through everything with a slip stitch. And that slip stitch into the base does not count as a stitch. Now we do need to work our way up to the following row. So we're going to slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base as well. That also doesn't count as a stitch and we're gonna flip our work. And now put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And just remember not to tug too tightly after every stitch. At the end of this row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And I will meet you back along the base to connect it once more. So we're back and we have just finished our one, two, three rows for our collar. And we're now gonna connect it into the base once more. So what we're gonna do is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to connect this row. That doesn't count as a stitch and to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base. That also does not count as a stitch and flip our work. Now from here, we're gonna put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and that's it. We're gonna to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. So we've just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam everything together. So what we're gonna do, this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides. So we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Now let's do our first seam. Let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop. Find that first stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So our seam for the collar is all finished. We're now going to do a single crochet row along the bottom just to clean it up. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now we want this bottom portion to be fitted, but we don't want it to be too tight to where we can't put it on once we need to put it on. So what we're gonna do is use a medium to loose grip. And we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row instead of the two single crochets into every side half double crochet row. So what we're gonna do is find our first side row. This is my first side row right here, which is a side half double. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook into there and loosely just single crochet. I'm not tightening, I'm not doing anything extra. Next, we're gonna find our following side row, which is a slip stitch row. Insert your hook in through there and loosely do one single crochet as well. Let's just do one more set. Into that following side half double crochet row, insert with one single crochet, and then into our following side slip stitch row, insert with another single crochet. Now we're going to continue to loosely single crochet, putting one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way around. Once when we have slip stitched into that chain space, right before we do a chain up of one and cut, try our piece on to make sure that this single crochet row is going to fit around us because this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this piece can stretch. 
So if it's too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip. Or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. Once we make sure that everything can fit, slip stitch into that chain space and do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that we have just finished up single crocheting along the bottom of our piece, the next thing we're going to do is clean up our armholes. So just single crochet around. So we're gonna make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and we're gonna insert our hook into the side row that we have that's nearest to our side seam. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do from here is put two single crochets into every side half double and one single crochet into every side slip stitch. So let's all start by finding our first side row, which is our side half double crochet row. And if you're like me, we should have some tail ends. So go ahead and place that over the hook. If you don't want to weave those in later, and we're going to single crochet around everything. And since our first side row is a side half double crochet row, we're going to be putting another single crochet into that top loop just like that and now from here our side slip stitch row find that top loop insert your hook with one single crochet and repeat this making our way all the way around once we reach our shoulder portion put one single crochet into every stitch once we have this all finished up do a chain up one and cut and then repeat this on the other side so we have all just finished up single crocheting along our armholes and now we're going to do the last thing which is our fringe so we're all going to start by cutting a bunch of yarn the length that we'd like for our fringe to be. Now the length of each strand is going to be folded in half. So I made sure that the length that I cut was double the length that I wanted plus one because of the tie that we're going to do. So as an example, I wanted about four inches to hang from the bottom of my top. So four plus four is eight. Plus I added an additional inch for the tie that we're going to do. But if I did have a quick tip for you, just make sure that you're cutting longer pieces because you can always go back and trim your fringe once when everything is done. So now that we have figured out the length that we would like for our fringe to be, we're now going to attach it. As you guys can see, I have already attached most of my fringe. I'm just going to do two of the stitches with you guys. So what we're gonna do for this piece is alternate between two strands of yarn into one stitch and then one strand into the next. And we're just doing that so that it's not too crowded so that the edges don't cluster out. So we're all gonna start with just one strand and we're gonna fold it in half. We're then going to take our hook and making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, we're going to bring our hook down from the top and in through one of our stitches. So go ahead and insert your hook in through there. Fold your yarn in half and place that loop on top of your hook. Then you're gonna pull that through. And then from here, you can use your hook or your fingers. I'm just gonna use my hook. Place the tail ends over my hook, pull through my loop, and then pull downwards to get it nice and secure. Now let's do the next one. The next one is gonna be done exactly the same way, but now with two strands. So taking your two strands of yarn, you're gonna find that following stitch and insert your hook. Place your loop onto your hook, pull through. Once when we have that loop, we're going to pull our tail ends through that loop. Then we're gonna pull down nice and tight and that's it we're just going to continue to alternate between one strand and two strands making our way all the way around when we don't have any more stitches left to work into we are all done and there you have it hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial join us on instagram pinterest or twitter those links are down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already catch you on the next one bye